I think that uh, the starting place is to appreciate what the larger game is, and that we're often focused on competitive strategy, but actually there are many players that you have to appreciate your role with, uh, not just competitors, but what's the opposite of a competitor? And that's something you might call a complementer, somebody who makes your goods and services more valuable rather than less valuable. Think about the relationship between Intel and Microsoft. Uh, they're not competing with each other. Uh, for customers, uh, Microsoft without Intel isn't worth much, and Intel without Microsoft isn't worth much. Now, what's interesting about that game is that they're also in a little bit of a prisoner's dilemma, but the opposite way that we normally think of. So we normally imagine companies are worried about their rivals undercutting them and uh, stealing market share. But here, the problem for Intel and Microsoft is each of them is charging too high a price, not too little a price. So think about what cooperation means in a prisoner's dilemma. Nobody confesses. Or in a cartel, we all agree to keep our prices high. But uh, so if you'd like, uh, Coke wants Pepsi to charge a lot and Pepsi wants Coke to charge a lot. But from Intel and Microsoft's perspective, Intel wants Microsoft to be cheap because that stimulates the sales of computers. And Microsoft wants Intel to be less expensive. If they were to get together and agree on pricing, what would they do? They would actually lower their prices. Because I'm willing to lower my price if you lower yours, because you're lowering your price helps me. And I'm willing to lower my price in response. And so the collusive outcome in the case of compliments actually is lower prices, more sales, higher profits, and happier customers. Well, knowing when to fold your cards uh, reminded me of an example in the card business. Uh, so uh, I think a uh, hallmark in American greeting cards. Uh, Hallmark had done this study which convinced them that uh, in-store printing of greeting cards was a disaster. Uh, that uh, ultimately the cards weren't very successful, it was too time consuming, it just wasn't going to work. Uh, and so they could have just folded their cards and uh, walked away if you like, but they actually left the impression that this was the best thing since sliced white bread. Uh, and they created that impression in the market to the point where American greeting cards uh, decide to really run with it big time and preempt them. Uh, and that uh, led American greeting cards down a dead end. There's another great example in the, uh, in the battle between uh, Sky TV and uh, British Satellite Broadcasting. Uh, this is a case uh, not that different uh, in the United States from our satellite radio, where there were two companies in the UK competing to see who was going to be the satellite TV broadcaster. And the UK, you know, it's a big country, but it's not that big. There was room for one. And so the question is, who was going to be the one company left standing at the end of the day? On one side was Murdoch, who was bringing the equivalent of uh, Baywatch uh, and shows that people like. And the other was the British satellite broadcasting, the BBC, uh, the, sort of the establishment version, uh, <clears throat> which was better funded, uh, had uh, more... Uh, highfalutin uh, content and uh, the uh, Her Royal Majesty's uh, approval. Um, and both of them were losing gobs of money, literally billions of pounds, uh, while they were in the market. So the question is, how can I convince the other side that I'm going to be the one who makes this? Uh, and what Murdoch did was, instead of selling satellite dishes, he started to lease them. Now, the problem with selling the dish is that if you're the customer and you buy the wrong dish, well, you look like an idiot because you've put in all, all this money. You had to explain to your spouse uh, why you've got this big planter in your yard now that you'll be humiliated with the rest of your life. But if you lease it and the company goes belly up, well, it's their problem, not yours. And so in this uh, standards war, remember we had with Blu-ray and HD DVD, uh, Customers sit there paralyzed. They won't go one way or the other. Uh, and Murdoch helped them make that decision, even in the face of uncertainty, by saying, I'll take that risk. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. And that display of confidence is really what allowed customers to go to his side and ultimately is what led the other side to, uh, to cave. When Avinash and I wrote our first book, Strategically, the world was a little bit more dog-eat-dog, -dog, or at least we saw it that way. 
And uh, as a result, uh, we were focused on the competitive side of things. But it turns out that strategies and game theory applies just as much to creating cooperative outcomes as it does to thinking about ways to beat other parties. Uh, of course, when you're working on a cooperative outcome, you also care about how much you're going to capture. So my goal is not to create value or create pie that others will eat. It's to create things that I will get. And so how can I work together to do something that will benefit both of us, but will in particular benefit me? And uh, that could be in the case of the prison dilemma, coming up to think about cooperation. It can be finding ways to structure partnerships that give all of us the right incentives. Uh, and uh, so game theory has focused too much on the, uh, the zero sum or the, the beating others, uh, as opposed to the how do you make the, the marriage or the uh, business partnership uh, successful and long lasting. Thank you.